Thank you. That was kind. Hello. Welcome to Multisite. Who here has worked with Multisite before? Everybody. So I don't need to be here. Um, who's a beginning developer or thinks of themselves as a beginning developer? An advanced developer or been doing this for a while? Okay. Well, hopefully this should help everybody a little bit. Um, I think the thing I want you to take away from this is how the internals of multi-site work, because I think an awareness of that can help you um, as you're doing things with multi-site. So we're going to start with a little history, um, because I think, well, the history of multi-site dates all the way back to before WordPress. Um, so having that as a context for um, what we're working with can sometimes help. It definitely helps when you're trying to figure out why different decisions were made in multi-site code that we then either use or have to work around. Um, so back in 2003, when Matt and Mike forked uh, B2 into WordPress, there were two other forks at the time, B2 Evolution and B2++. Uh, B2++ is a fork created by Donna Coquive. Uh, that he used to install B2 for many different users as part of his uh, Linux users forums, blogs.linux.ie. So pretty much the same exact thing where one installation of B2 would power many different sites. Um, when the first version of WordPress was released, Matt reached out to Donica and asked him if he'd like to be a, a core developer with WordPress and asked if we could merge the two projects together. Donica said yes. Um, and B2++ became WordPress MU. So for a few years, uh, WordPress MU development kind of existed here while WordPress was here, and then every time a new WordPress release came out, it would be merged into MU and, um, at some time and, and be distributed. Um, in 2005, WordPress.com started. Matt hired Donica as the first automatic employee, I believe. Um, and then WordPress multi-site kind of really got started. The community grew around multi-site. WordPress.com, of course, being an open blog registration um, for many different users, many different sites. Uh, and then in 2009, Matt announced at the State of the Word that multi-site was going to be merged into WordPress proper. Um, 2010, there's a huge effort, if you ever have hours, uh, ticket 11644 um, is a long ticket to read through on the merge of multi-site. So that's how we got here, um, and now we can get into details. So we're going to walk through four things. They all kind of relate uh, pretty closely. Uh, the structure of multi-site itself and the bootstrap process that kind of helps determine what part of that structure we're using. Um, plugins and themes, how those are loaded. Uh, the context of your code and how it's important to be aware um, what part of multi-site you're in as you work. And then finally, a few common solutions to questions that get asked often by people who are using multi-site for the first time. So WordPress itself is, I think of it as a router of requests. So a request comes in, WordPress routes it to wherever it needs to go. Um, a single post, a post archive, a category archive, you know, something. So it follows this common pattern that a lot of different PHP applications use, where it's index.php kind of controls where things are going to go. So we have a bunch of logic that determines, you know, I receive a request, where does it go? So WordPress multi-site works the same way, but it uses tables to, to also separate these requests. Um, when you install WordPress for the first time, you get a set of 10 tables. Uh, you get posts, options, comments, terms, users. Uh, the second you install WordPress multi-site, the users table become global, and then you get a set of another six tables um, that hold the sites, the networks, and then some registration and sign-up information. Now, at this point, you have a multi-site. Um, it only has one site, but it can be considered a network. Uh, 